Okay, so this is still um, the partial fractions section. We're just going to start working on our second example. In this example, we still do not need to do long division because my numerator's degree is not larger than my denominator's degree. So I'll leave that alone. But I do need to factor that denominator. And just as my side work, I'm going to factor out an x first. So I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And I don't think that that can factor any further. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. This is just over here is my side work. This cannot... Oh, maybe it can. Hmm. X plus 1 times X plus 1. Yeah, it gives me that. So then I get X, X plus 1 squared. So my side work again continues over here. So let's see. I have two linear factors. This linear factor has an exponent of 1. So I only need one fraction with the constant above it to represent that denominator. However, this factor has an exponent of 2, which means I will need two fractions to represent that factor. x plus 1 by itself and then x plus 1 squared, both still with a um, constant coefficient in the numerator. So we do the same thing before where we multiply by the common denominator. Common denominator is this. So this one ends up with this one ends up having the x plus 1 squared next to it which is actually this. So I am multiplying the same thing top and bottom um, to make them all have a common denominator, but eventually the common denominators all cancel out, right? So there's nothing, the x is going to cancel with this x. So I'm just going to have ax squared plus 2ax plus a. Here, one of them will cancel, but I'll still be left with x and an x plus 1, or x squared plus x. So if I distribute my b to that, I get bx squared plus bx. Same thing here, if I multiply by this, the x plus 1 squared will cancel, but I'll still have to multiply by x. So let's see, if we set up our system of equations, x squared a plus b should equal 5. For the x's, I have 2a plus b plus c should equal 20. And then for my constants, I have a equals 6. So I can I already have one variable. I can plug that into the top equation and find b. So what would b have to be if it was 6 plus b equals 5? Well, that means b would have to equal negative 1. And then I can plug both a and b into the second equation. So 2 times 6 would be 12 minus 1 plus c equals 20. Or 11 plus c equals 20. Or c equals 9. So I have all of my letters here. So this integral, again, remember, this is all your side work, not part of the problem. So my answer is going to have my integral is going to have these fractions now. I'm going to have a over x plus b over x plus 1 plus c over x plus 1 squared. Now, here I'm going to end up with the natural log, but here it's squared. So this is actually a u substitution. So when we integrate this, and it depends on how good you are at integration, whether you can do this right away or you need to see it all broken down. Um, but we're far beyond the integration rules. So I am going to just do the integration. Um, if you're having difficulty with it or you're wondering how to do it, 
um, please go back and review U substitution and then review your natural logarithm in, in integration. So this is going to be 6 ln of x minus the ln of x plus 1. And this is going to be 9 um, x plus 1 to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. Now this can be simplified. So 6 ln of x minus ln of x plus 1 minus 9 over x plus 1 plus c. But for the most part, that is the final answer. We'll continue example three in the next video.